All right, boys, welcome back. Today we're back in the shop. We have behind us our customers pistons, all of his rods and pistons, the bearings, everything. We got a short block tore apart. As you can see, I've got one of our rings already put in there. We're gonna start gapping the piston rings for this engine. He chose a shelf Wiseco 87 millimeter piston for his K24. So when you get your rings, they're gonna come in a box like this. Right here, these two really thin ones, those are gonna go with this ring, that's your oil control ring. Then you're gonna have another ring that's thicker than those two. That's gonna be your top ring. And then in each pack, you're gonna have, I already have it in here, but you're gonna have a ring that's thicker than all the other ones. That's your second ring. So if you're wondering what those are, your oil control ring, all three of those there, are gonna go right here in the bottom. Then your second ring is gonna go right here in the middle, the thicker one. And then your top ring, obviously, is gonna go at the top. Now, when you're trying to figure out what you wanna gap your piston rings at, your pistons are gonna come with a paper like this. You're gonna have to convert whatever your bore size is into inches. And for that, I think it's 3.425 for us. I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So you're gonna take that number and you're gonna choose what you're doing with your vehicle because not everybody's piston gap is gonna be the same. So for us, we're gonna use street moderate turbo nitrous or probably, it might be a while before he turbos this, so I'll probably use the street strip and we'll go bore size in inches times 0 0.0045 for our top ring, which is this one. For our second ring, we're gonna use 0 0.0055 times our bore size in inches, and that's gonna be for this one. So when you do that, you're gonna grab your feeler gauges and you're just gonna check what the pist or what the ring gap is currently. So if you take an 18 thou, you're gonna stick it in here. Well, first of all, I put the ring in there and then I grab like an old piston that came out of the engine and you wanna take the top ring out of it. So it's just got that second ring and you're gonna put your ring in there and to get it even, you're gonna take this and you're gonna set it down in there just like so. I like to just spin it around a couple times and that will get your ring perfect. If it's uneven, you're not gonna get an accurate you're not going to get an accurate reading on what the uh, what the gap size is on there. So I'm going to grab an 18 thou. Wisecos are usually pretty close to what you want to do out of the box. Not always, but usually. So I'm going to grab an 18 thou. I'm going to check it in here. It's in there. It's it's pretty loosely in there. Yeah. So it's able to fall out. So I'm not going to call that one 18. Oh, well, it's probably a 19. Now I'm going to grab a 19. I'm going to try to put that one in there. 19 sits in there. Nice and easy. I didn't have to force it and it doesn't fall out. So that ring gap currently is at 19 thou. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to, his, I'm going to do at 18 and 21. That's what I like to do with them. You can do whatever you want with yours. So I'm going to take that out and I'm just going to take just a hair back off of it and, or I'm going to take a hair off of it and open it up until I get to like 20 or 21. This is what you're going to use with that. Now this, if you're using one of these, which you should be, I don't recommend using a grinder, but if you're using one of those, you want to just go really slow. So you're going to take the ring out. You're going to put it in here. And when you do this, you want to have the ring butted up there perfectly straight. Because when you put it in there, if these two go to butt up and you don't have a straight gap, you're gonna have issues. So when you're filing your ring, be very careful. I'm gonna do this one and then I'll get a tripod set up and I will try to get some close up footage of me filing a couple of them and then putting them in there. I'm not gonna bore you guys with all four of them because it's a very repetitive time consuming process, but I will set a tripod up and I'll go ahead and film me doing at least one whole set. On the oil control rings, I forgot to mention this. These ones, just set them to the side. 
we'll take those. Oh, Jesus. We'll take those. I'm going to set those to the side. You're not going to gap those. You're just going to gap your top ring and your second ring. And that's it. So I'm going to get this stuff set up and I'll pick the camera up again. All right. So we're going to start fresh. I've already done cylinder one. So we're going to do cylinder two right now. I've got my ring in there right now. Push it down. Spin this. You can see it's nice and level. Now... That one we want close to 21. I'm going to check it. 18 fits. Nineteen fits. And stays. I bet 20 is not going to fit. 20 fits, but I got to kind of put it in there. So we're going to check it. Make sure it is. Nice and even, which it is. And we're just going to take a hair off of that thing. So, right over here. And we're just going to spin this a couple times. Put a little pressure on it, not a lot. And that's it. We're only trying to take a dial off this thing. I'm going to put it back up in here. Good work. Let's grab our piston. Let's check 21. 21 goes in there and holds, but I got to like... It won't go in there all the way unless I force it, force it. So I'm going to take just a hair back off of that one. Just a hair. That's it. All right. I got it put back in there. Let's check our 21. Perfect. See if I can zoom in. You can see the 21. 21. Sitting there. Perfect. So, now I'm going to pull that ring back out of there. And I'm going to set it up here in my ring pack. That one is done. Now I'm going to grab this ring, your top ring. And I'm going to take that. See if I can do it one handed. Stick it in there, put it in, pull it up, grab the piston, see what I'm saying, it, it's pretty repetitive, like, oh, that ain't gonna do it, we pushed it through, pull it back up, this just takes forever, it's just tedious is all this is. I want your rings sticking all the way out on one side, but not the other. Should be nice and level now. Now this one we want close to 18, so we're hoping this won't fit or will fit perfectly. Not even close. So that ring's gonna have to get filed a decent amount. So. I'll set the tripod up for you one more time and I'll go ahead and show you guys me filing this ring and fitting it and then putting it in there. And that's probably all I'm going to show as far as filing the rings and gapping them goes. And then I'll pick the camera back up when I go to put the rings on the pistons and show you guys how to do all that. Cool. All right. So we got all the rings gapped. I already put the rings on the other four pistons, but I had my brother pick the phone up so I can show you guys how to do it on this one. You don't need to see me do all four of them. So here we go. The thin ones, you got two thin rings in case you missed. The two thin rings, Jesus. And this oil control ring are all part, all part of the oil control ring, which again is the very bottom one. And then you have your second ring, which you can look and you'll always be able to see like a little oil scraper on it. It's 
your oil scraper ring. And if you look at them, they have a little letter on top of each ring. Your second and your top ring will have a letter on them. That letter needs to face up. So the letter faces up towards the top of the piston. So with these, you can obviously see it's got a break in it. The point, the point of that ring needs to face up, not down. Down is not right. So face that ring up. I always put this ring on first. Don't put one of those on first. You won't be able to get this on there. Put one of those on there. Then I take one. One's going to go above it and one's going to go below it. I'll get one of them. They make a tool to put these rings on. It makes it a lot easier. I don't have that tool. So be very careful with them because the rings break really easily. These oil rings won't break very easy. But these two, those will break quick. Then I flip it back over, start it on there, and then you just kind of roll around it. Roll around, get it in a groove, and then I pull it back out of that groove. I'll put that side down in the next one, roll it around, and then the same thing until it's on top of that oil control ring. Find your gap right there, push it down, just roll it all the way around. And eventually, oh, I'll pop back up. Put it down there. Now I'm gonna roll it around. My brother's breathing like a billy goat over here. All right, the oil control ring is done. Now you want, there's a gap in each of these rings. So if this gap on the bottom is, we'll say at this valve relief, you want the gap on the top one, at the valve relief on the other side. So you just got to kind of play with it. I'll do that later. I'm not going to film myself doing all that. Now the next one, which is your second ring, in is facing up. These ones you got to be really careful with. These are the ones you're going to break. So I go like this. I'll get it started. Just get it on there. This is where the tool comes in handy. But you got to be real, really, really careful. I pull it. Pull this one. Get it in its groove. And then I just kind of pull if you have to, slide it down. Now that one's on. It's in his groove. Top one. And it's facing up. Same thing. Kind of set it there. Get that around there. Yeah. I'm always so scared that one's going to break. You catch one little groove in this piston and you will break that ring. You'd be stuck waiting to order new ones. All right, so now, bottom ring, your oil control ring, I'm gonna find one of the gaps. Right here, both gaps are right there. So that gap, I'm gonna take my nail, and I'm gonna spin it all the way to the opposite. So now one gap is here, and the other gap is on this valve relief. So now, Take your second ring and put it like towards this one. So I'm going to take the gap. And you'll want that gap towards that one. And then directly across from that, your top gap. Right now isn't really the best time to do this because the rod's not on the... You want to do this right before it goes in your ring compressor. And you start to put it in the engine. Because right now they're just... Every time you pick this up to put the rod in there, put the wrist pin, you're going to you're going to move these rings all around. So there's no point to waste your time doing it right now when you're just going to move them all around. So if you come over here, you'll see. I'm just going to put this piston back in here. Well, I need to number it. That's number four. I always number them because I... Four. You gap the rings to the certain cylinder. You guys saw that earlier. So number four... I'm going to go back in the box. They're all done. All the rings are on them. I'm going to throw our trash away. And then we'll be back in the morning. And we'll start putting rods on pistons. And then we'll throw that crank I just went and got for them in the engine. And we'll get that short block assembled. So for now, that's going to be it. If you guys like the video, don't forget to drop below, like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Anything you want to say there? Yeah, you weirdo.